you know, I, I'm, I think I'm kind of stuttering a little bit because I'm overly excited about what's in this. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Joe. I'm Rob. And I'm Matt. And welcome to Bluegrass Whiskey Review. Today's uh, Joe's birthday, so we're gonna do a special bottle. You wanna tell them about the bottle we got for your birthday here? Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I, I yeah. wish you guys would've got it for me. You know, it's, it's actually been sitting up on my shelf for about a year. I'm kind of trying to think of a special occasion to break it out. I'm like, hey, why not my birthday? I think my wife's like, hey, when is my birthday? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. So, well, we're uh, glad to be here to take part in your bottle opening. Uh, yeah. Of a, a good pour here. So, we're excited. I wouldn't have it any other way. And, and, and to really kick it off, I'm, I'm going to open this bad boy because I, I'm more than excited about it. But um, So, this is the 2017 George T. Stag. Um, like I said, I've had it up there for about a year. Um, can't believe I'm opening a beat tag right now. That's yeah. kind of how I feel. Well, let's tell the story how you got it, how you came across it. Yeah, definitely. If you guys want to do the honor of giving yourself some pour there and pour me up. Um, so I got this at uh, actually Lucky's uh, Supermarket Lottery. Uh, waited out in line. Uh, probably 100 people out there. I don't think it was oh, too overly crowded. I think they still have more tickets, but it was definitely cold. I think November time frame. Man, that's got an awesome color to it, you guys. I'm excited about this. Uh, Seems like all the releases tend to be in the freezing cold. Yeah. This was actually, I got it in 2018, so I think this was a leftover bottle. Kind of rubbed me the wrong way that people hold on to them that long in supermarkets and stuff, but I'm still glad I got it. Um, you got my raffle ticket. I had a pretty good year last year on raffles. Uh, every single time? Yeah, yeah. every single time. I did, I, I did do pretty well, but uh, I, I think I was still actually even Maybe the second or third one pick, they might have had a uh, old Rip Van Winkle 10 in there or a Lot B as well. And so, uh, I first class, first world problems, I already had an old Rip Van Winkle. So I was like, oh, I'll take the George T. Stag. Um, Come on out here, it's not a bad choice to, to go with. Like that. It's, uh, I'm excited to try it. All right, so this one, this George T. Stag is 129.2 proof. So, Matt, for those who don't know what BTAC stands for, uh, what yeah, does BTAC stand for? Yeah, it's the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. So, there's, what is it, four or five? There's the yeah. Thomas H. Handy, the George T. Stag, the Sazerac 18, and is it Eagle Rare 17? Yeah. Uh, so, that makes up the Louis BTAC Bitt. collection. I think one more, William LaRue Weller. Oh, oh the other one out there. Yeah, yeah the other one kind of. I'll never get my hands on one of those. I, know. <laughs> I, I think as releases go, I think generally there is more George T. Stag that's put out than anything else. So some of your other releases are going to be way more allocated. So we're really, still lucky we got our hands on one. Um, so a little bit about George T. Stag. Uh, distiller right after um, E.H. Taylor uh, had the company. And it was renamed to Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, okay, let's, let's start back again. It was E.H. Taylor Distillery, then George T. Stagg Distillery, then turned into OFC for a little while, and then it was named Buffalo Trace. But uh, George C. Stagg, I think, had the longest namesake of that facility. Uh, that's really where we get the name from there. So he, he kind of really gutted it through, you know, the modern time prohibition, uh, you know, the issues coming back out of it, it gutted it through all of that. And uh, so they, they named basically the BTAC namesake after George T. Stagg. The bourbon itself is aged no or no less than 15 years. Gotcha. So you know you're getting a quality uh, bourbon there, anything coming out of there, especially using that long. Um, it, very interesting, I didn't know this, but they actually release a letter saying what's kind of the bourbon consists of, you know, they, they make it that official. So it's a really interesting notes when I looked that up. It, you know, rise that were out of Minnesota. Of course, it was all it was Kentucky corn. It was pretty cool. Um, some other malted barley out of like Iowa or something. So really interesting information that was in that letter. 309 barrels selected. So it's not say a single barrel. It's a, it's a small batch where they put it together and, and kind of craft what that is. Um, you know, I, I'm 
I think I'm kind of stuttering a little bit because I'm overly excited about what's in this. Uh, and you should be, and you've got some really cool uh, new glasses yeah, for, yeah. for your birthday. Yeah, for my your wife, birthday right? gift there. Yeah, my wife really went uh, above and beyond. Uh, got some uh, Norcon glasses, so these are like double walled, supposed to aerate the bourbon, give you a better nose for it, supposed to make it go down a little bit smoother. I'm really trying these out for the first time. Another thing about George T. Stack 2, unfiltered. So, you know, no, not, it's not a non chill filter, it's not a uh, cold filter, charcoal filter, of course, as the Tennessee whiskeys are. Um, non filtered. So, you know, they pour it from the barrel, they, they, they batch it together, and they blend it, and that's what you get. So, cool. Yeah, I'm really excited. Very super nice color, that dark topper. Um, yeah. And I'm curious on the Glen Cairns, do you get a different color than? Obviously, it's clear, but just because it's double walled, it's different. Pretty much it's pretty, pretty similar yeah. there. So, so a nice copper color yeah. um, on that. You can definitely see that uh, aging process. What are you getting on the nose? A lot of like chocolate. Yeah. I mean dark. Yeah, almost uh, syrupy notes. Dark cherries. I feel um, like you can always pull a little caramel out of it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm getting a little bit of like uh, tobacco, like a cigar box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of thing. Like a nice yeah, I think that pleasure. age yeah. really really gets it there. But you know, for 129 proof, was it getting up there? It is oh, it's, it's not smelling like, like 129. Yeah. You're not getting any of those vapors that are scorching your nose or, or you know, kind of making your eyes water. Yeah, and I've always heard that the the aroma of a George T. Stag is is a little deceiving because it's although it's uh, uh, known to be quite a, a nice pour, it's yeah. Still got some some more to it, so I'm excited to see. But. Well, uh, Joe, won't you go first? Let's say in honor of my birthday. Let's, cheers! Yes, uh, cheers! Happy birthday, Dan! Thank, Thank you. It does. It has a it has a quality a quality bite to it, but it's not something that is burning. Mm -hmm. The way down, like it, uh, it, it's on my tongue. Yeah. That's what it is. That's I agree. I, I wouldn't say it's a burn. It's like a, it's a little bite, but it, you know, at, once you once you swallow, it stays on the tongue. Uh, I wouldn't say oily, no, mm -hmm. but it's staying there. It, you know, some some of the I feel like the darker tasting notes, like the cinnamons and um, definitely that oak tannin that's in there. You let it sit in your mouth for a minute, and then once you swallow yeah, it, you can really taste the flavors coming it's, through. Yeah, it's definitely a a, uh, a different pour than what we've had so far. Yeah, I can sure. still kind of taste the chocolate that, that front flavor was a little bit. Quite sweet mm -hmm. on the front of the tongue. Just You're right. Hit sweet, and then that was like boom, fills your mouth up with that mm -hmm. that back of the tongue, that warmth that you guys are talking about. Yeah. You were right, Gary. When you, when you when at first you taste it, when it, when it touches your lips. It's, it's really sweet, but that releases to all that flavor that's in there. So it, I, I think very robust. It, it's not, there's not one flavor that's, you know, overcoming anything else. It's, you, you kind of wait a little bit and you, you taste something else, whether it's a chocolate note or maple or a, a caramel, a very deep caramel uh, or the oak itself. I want to get like a hint of after after the bite, I get a hint of like a like a dark cherry or mm -hmm. something, you know, just a real deep fruity taste. Yeah. It's, it's not like the the buffalo trace or yeah the blends that we reviewed where we've got some of that that fruity taste there. It's it's quite different yeah. in the way it hits the tongue. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to George T. Stag, obviously it's a hard one to come by. Uh, MSRP is. What would you pay for that? So I paid a little bit more than I think MSRP kind of equates to. I, I think I paid about 179 for it out of Lucky's, um, which is probably still very good in yeah. secondary market on it. About anywhere between 400 to 450 is what I was yeah. seeing throughout the year on secondary. At some of the liquor barn releases, I think I saw it for 119 or 129. Yeah, I was thinking so, what I had seen it before was around 120. Yeah. Um, Which so. is a, a great buy for, for this bourbon. I mean, yeah. it surpassed my expectations on, on the George Stag. Stag. Yeah, we'll take it all day long at, at 120, even if my wife has issue with that. So, 
So Joe will be back over here uh, tomorrow night to have another glass, is that right? I, yeah, well, now that it's open, you know, I have to, you know, I have to understand how it kind of lives and breathes now that yeah. I've opened it up. So it, it might be a different pour tomorrow. Yeah. Let it breathe, let it sit on the And I've heard that. I've heard if uh, once, it's, once it's open, then it sort of breathes for uh, several minutes, then you're going to get a different, and, you know, by the time, after this video, as we finish these pours, um, then we may get slightly, slightly different, but that first right out of the bottle was quite amazing. So yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, we kind of end the videos usually with a, hey, would you buy it? Uh, would you persuade your friend to buy it? I, I think we're pretty much all on board. If you see it, and it's around MSRP or definitely left in secondary. If it's below $200, I would grab it in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would definitely persuade my friend yeah. to have me over yes. to have a four for sure. Yeah. So. And, and that's what bourbon's about. So I'm glad I can celebrate my birthday with these guys. I'm glad I can open a great bottle. Uh, we'll just continue the experience as we continue to release videos. Uh, you know, we'll see you guys out at the uh, raffle and the drawings. Um, it's a good time, it's a good community, it's what it's all about. So uh, I guess, can we end with a cheers and say, uh, keep the pours coming, guys? Let's do it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers.